deal with airplane peanuts. But the Ali's were the first people I ever met, ever, beside my godfather that ever spoke to me about sex. And then I had this Puerto Rican dude on my block, Puerto Rican Nelson. He lived in the back. He was a bartender in the city. He used to always ask me. And he wasn't a freak or nothing. I always thought that at one point he would molest me. Yeah. And even till today, I think deep sometimes. And fucking Puerto Rican Nelson never molest me because he used to always have a robe on and slippers and shit. <laughs> That's how he walked around? Oh, my God. Puerto Rican Nelson. Was... I love that you're not sure if he did. You feel like it's maybe... Yeah, like, I think, did he ever dope me? Like, he even put a Cosby on me? Because everything about him fits like an M.O. He was just a good dude. Yeah. That we used to go outside and help us fix our bike. And he was a Spanish dude. And he was just, you know, he had the sideburns and the leather jacket. And it was the fucking early 70s. And I moved to Jersey. And he would talk to a bunch of us, and one day he would take us in the back. His claim to fame with me was that I became friends with him. And I go over there, and he had a black friend uh, that had went over to the, the Rock of Gibraltar, and he brought pictures back. And then he would just talk to me. And then one day he asked me, me, me <laughs> You gotta come on beat. You ever go to somebody's house, and you, you go to their house a lot, and they're sober? But one day you catch them and they're fucking hammered. Yeah. And we go over there and it's like early in the morning. Like I used to go over there every morning at 10 and wake them up and, 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 and what's up, man? What are we going to do today? Give me an hour. I'll go out there and play stickball with you. And he come out with coffee and he reeked of alcohol. Yeah. You know, he was <laughs> one of those dudes in the summer. You know, no air conditioning. Or Just a dynamite dude. Yeah. And one day uh, I knock on the door and. He answers with a towel around him, and he's sitting down like he's all fucked up. I go, Nelson, you're going to play football? He's like, man, not today, you know, and all this shit. He goes, come back in like two hours. So, you know, we were, in those days, you're punctual. Yeah. Like, we were there in two hours. He answered, though, you guys again? The fucking curtains were still up. He invites us in. He's got a towel on. You know, he turns a light on, and there's, like, a table filled with alcohol, you know, and, like... Oh, yeah? How old were you at this point? Twelve. <laughs> Twelve, and I can't remember who what? the fuck I walked in there with. Like, it was, like, six of us in the neighborhood that liked Nelson, but two of us actually interacted a little closer with Nelson. Yeah. I was Spanish, so I understood Nelson's world. I knew Puerto Rican people, but I can't believe who else <laughs> was the other guy. That mingled with Nelson. So we had woken Nelson up. He goes, come in, come in. We sit on his couch. You guys want a soda? He gives us a soda. He puts the TV on. You can see he's still fucked up from the night before. He's got the towel on. And he's like, so you guys get late? And we don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Like, nobody ever spoke to me like that. I had uncles that would ask me, did anybody suck your dick yet? Yeah. Are you pissing sweet yet? That type of shit. <laughs> But this, <laughs> you oh yeah, yeah. When you're Spanish, they preguntan, "Oye, tú me you know what I'm saying? Great. Yeah, it's it's a great line. <laughs> but Nelson was basically the first person ever. But like, oh I God. I known about sex, but Nelson was the first person ever that said it could be yours. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, what do you mean you never had sex? I got a girl right now. She come over and clean your pipe. You know, and we're like, and we're both like fucking shit in our pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you come up with like ten dollars or something. We're like, nah, nah, nah. So that was it. He never talked about it again. And then one day we're sitting there like a month. I just love this a guy, <laughs> like a, a guy in a fucking towel, has neighborhood boys over and offers to get them all over. <laughs> and he's drunk because he's outraged that they haven't had sex in fourteen or twelve. <laughs> So he was cool as fuck. Yay! He used to play bad basketball with us and shit. So one day I go over there with this kid and he starts telling us. What's his name again? Puerto Rican Nelson. We go. <laughs> Is it be capitalized? No, Puerto Rican Nelson was cool as fuck because he used to bring us weed from the city and he would actually give us seven joints for five dollars. Wow. He really took care of us. It wasn't like he was a bad guy, which to me meant the world. Because a lot of people could bring you weed over in those days, but they say, I take a joint off the top. Hmm. He was like, I, I got to go over it anyway. Don't worry about it. 
that gives me a better deal. So I always liked him because of that. So one day we're there, and a, and a girl's there. A girl comes out of his bedroom. Me and my buddy are like, wow, look at Puerto Rican now, some of the broad. She sits on his lap and shit. And he's like, yeah, this is my girl. And he's feeling her up. And he's making out in front of her. <laughs> and feeling it to these shit. <laughs> and me and my buddy are frozen. Like, we're just, I can feel, I can feel, I can't remember who the fuck it was. So, wow. boom, how old just, was this guy? This guy had to be 28, and the bro was like 21. But he was he was one of those, he had to be 26, maybe. He he was from somewhere else, and he lived there. This is before the computer, and before Neighborhood Watch, and before. <laughs> <laughs> and, and no one was freaked out by a pack of 12 year olds hanging out with them? No, because like, in those days, a lot of parents came out and played with kids. And you I know, that's different touch. now. See, it's different now. I would never now. be able to play with a random kid no, in my No, so everybody knew him from the neighborhood. And in those days, we wanted to go into the murky waters. Yeah. And he was kind of opening the door. Not really, to be honest with you. Mm. It took a long time. It's not like he lurked us into his house and said, do you guys want to have sex? This is after we knew him for a year. Right. We'd, we'd go back there all the time and get water after a basketball game. We knew him, you know. But now he knew we were growing up and he knew what our needs were. I look at it now. Like, he was, he was just trying to... But we couldn't handle it. Yeah. So one day we're sitting back there. We had a basketball game. And he's like, hey, man, what did you think of that fucking broad the other day? Me and my buddy like, oh, she was banging. He goes, I'll tell you what. He goes, tell, tell these guys how hot she was. And me and my buddy's like, yeah, she was hot. And he's like, oh, when can we see her? He goes, listen, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> he goes, listen, I'm going to fuck her tonight in the living room. And I'll leave the window open. You guys can come by and listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how many times I go to an audition, I hear this. Like, my, this is my, a lot of people don't like to audition. I like to audition, and I'll tell you why, because I fuck with them. Because you're funny. You know, I've ripped my pants out. You know, if you watch, uh, uh, two, what's that show on CBS that's been on forever? I don't fuck Which one? The Monday Nights. The Big Bang Theory. The, the one before that, How I, met, that, you, how how I, I met Your Mother. Yeah. I did How, you know how I got How I Met Your Mother? I didn't even know you did it. Yeah, if you watch the episode, you're like, Joey, you're an extra. I'm an extra. You know why? Because I went into the audition, I had no underwear on. And there was this, you see these things that pop out of chairs? Yeah. The side things, the way mm -hmm. you do your armrest? Right. And she goes, get up to read. When I when I got up to read the, the scene, down. the fucking thing got caught in the hole in my pants and my dick came out. <laughs> All three women sat there and I go, did you see the egg roll? And then I lost them for sure. They even told me, they go, you got the job. As I was walking down the street on Fox, my phone rang. My agent goes, go back. You didn't even read. I didn't even read. And they had called my agent and said, we love this guy. <laughs> I went back. And when I went, they didn't even read. Dick. They saw uh, the Cuban egg roll. You know, well, but they were th probably not used to someone with confidence that didn't give a fuck. You know, I went to an audition one time, bro, where the guy had to, I'll never forget this. The guy was a white trash guy. Like this family moved in. It was a pilot for ABC. And this guy uh, is one of those guys that uh, he had a little circular pool in front of his house. And he was he was watering his shit, but at the same time he had like a thong on. And he's fat. And he's got jewelry on, like one of those guys in like Long <laughs> Island. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> so I'll never forget. I get to the audition. All these guys are there. Tony Longo, God rest his soul. All these big Italian dudes. And I knew they were going to get the part, bro. I'm like, they're going to get the part. I'm not going to get it. But I had warm-ups on. All right, I had warm-up sign with the string, and I had white, tidy whiteies, and I had a zip-up jacket, and I had to weigh 380. So I walk in, I go, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my pants off. And I <laughs> right? I'm taking my fucking sweats off. Dog, I walk in, and what do you think these two ladies say to me? Hold on one second. We'll be bit with you in a minute. So they turn around. That's my cue, bitch. I took those sweatpants off. I took the shoes off and my socks, and I walked closer, and I took my shirt off. When they turned back around, all I had was boxer shorts on, like the tiny whiteies. That's it. Tits hanging out. <laughs> stomach hanging over the underwear. And they, and they did, as soon as they turned around, they were like, oh, my God. They're like, that is terrible. Put your shirt back on. I'm like, I'm not putting on shit, all right? I'm reading this motherfucker how it is. So you were supposed to, like, wave and say good right. morning. Right. And they're like, action. And, I'm, and they're like, can't even look at me because I'm completely <laughs> naked. 
you know, and they can't even look at me. And I'm making believe I'm flipping burgers. And I look over at them and I go, living like a doctor. <laughs> That's it. They booked me. At, when I got to the audition, it's, that was the read. Living like a doctor. They even gave me my own line. Half of those auditions I went into, they gave me whatever line I said in the audition. Like, whatever they said wasn't good enough. Like, I go in there with my own fucking line. Yeah, that's that's probably why you got it. Look, this? look, look at Joey. He's just sitting there, there like a mook the galore. That's when you were wearing those big daddy shirts. Yeah, all look the time. how big I was. Jesus Christ, you were enormous back then. Those that must have been like what two thousand then, right? God, yeah, this is two thousand, two thousand two, two thousand. I remember when I when I met you, like right after I met you, I brought you onto the set of news radio, oh, and they God. they were all like, um, wh "Who is this guy with the leather this, jacket on? Is this guy your friend?" Like, I go, "That's Joey." <laughs> <laughs> the kids on 148th Street were Puerto Rican, Irish, Italian, a couple Jews, and all of them were tough. But we're talking same age range and everything. Same a age whole range. Different world so up I, here. Before I got into Santeria, my mom would send me up to my godmother's house on 148th Street and Broadway, 20 blocks from the epicenter of the world, Harlem. You're 20 blocks from Harlem. You're, I was the heartbeat of New York City. I'm 20 blocks from the How heartbeat of right New York now? City. Six, five. Oh, wow. So I'm hanging out down there on 88th Street playing buck buck and killing rats. 148th Street, complete. Six years old, you're killing rap. Complete different game. First yeah. day on 148th Street, they came up to me, how you doing, Ricky, whatever, and also they're like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I don't know, I play, play stickball. And they're like, nah, you want to see a body? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, let's go see a dead body. I'm like, I like these kids. They took me down to West Side Avenue, and they had some guy who had been hit by a car. This is the 70s. This is like 65. There was no CSI. If you got hit by a car, you were there for like two or three days. You saw but that your first dead body. The first dead six, body I years. saw, he was already had the flies on him, and they just threw plywood over him, and he was starting to stink like from ten feet away, like he had just been there maybe like Jesus like these kids were. He Christ. was right by the Hudson River, and we would walk down to the Hudson River, and then finally two days later we went down and there was a crime scene. Obviously, some fucking, you know, in those days people didn't jog. <laughs> It's not like today that there's jogging. Yeah. I can kill you. Jogger, I heart. can kill you and drop you on a 170. <laughs> they never find you. Uh, today, these fucking joggers, <laughs> they're out there looking around. And they always find bodies, joggers. Uh, it's not like they find like a $20 bill. You never yeah. see a jogger go, I found an envelope full of money. They always find some lady beat up and raped. What the oh, fuck kind of morning God. is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh my god. god. Oh shit. We're only at six. <laughs> <laughs> All this we're only at six. <laughs> and then one day I transferred from fucking Catholic school, got thrown out, and I went to McKinley. And now I had to go to school with John and all those other kids in that area. And it, and it was not hard for me. I can't lie to you. It wasn't hard for me. I I knew them already. Excuse me. I knew half of them already from the neighborhood. So in the sixth grade, I fucking went to the courts like I did every day, and I'm playing basketball because I want to be good at basketball. Okay. And this kid, Richie Ferreira, wants to play basketball. So we're playing basketball, and he's kind of drunk. Now I'm fucking 12. You know, maybe 11, 12. Richie Ferrara's maybe 17. So fucking in the middle of the game, I say, Richie, stop following us. And he pushes me and he throws the ball down the fucking hill. I get up to push him. He just knocks the shit out of me. And I, I didn't cry or nothing. I just took it and went down to the corner and went and picked up the fucking ball and went home. But my pants were ripped. I tell the story on stage. Not in the extended version. But this all went down, and Carmine was on his porch with Peter looking at this. This was a commotion. And the next thing you fucking know, I go home, and I go in the shower. My mom's home. What the fuck is my mom doing? I go in the shower. The phone always rings when my mom is home, so I don't. But the next day is when, when I got home, and she said, listen, we're going to go to the park. You got beat up yesterday? You didn't do nothing. And I'm like, Ma, what the fuck? So she takes me to the park. She takes the guy. We fight. 
He beats me up again. My mom walks me home, tells me it's okay. I'm going to get into a lot of brawls in my life. But guess what Richie Ferrara does? What? He hires John Bender to fight me. What? So I'm in the sixth grade one day, and John Bender comes in and he goes, hey, fucko, spick, whatever. We're fighting at three today. You, Richie Ferrara. Da, 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 da. How, how old was John? Sixth grade. We're both the same age. What? Both the same age. Okay. So now I go home. I take my books out. Now, this was big time. This was weird because they thought Carmine was going to come. So Bobby got on the corner. They had people on top of the hill. And John showed up with every white kid in town. And all, I'm standing there with fucking Martin Perez, Valentin Farrow, Dominic Special, and Michael Special. You know, he showed up with 15 fucking kids. And they made a circle. And I fought him, and he broke my nose. And I gave him a black eye, and he busted my lip. He really beat me up, if you want to know the truth. And the next day, we just went to school like nothing happened. And then, like a week later, he comes up to me. And he goes, listen, what happened? I feel really bad. And he shook my hand. And I took it for what it was. I always knew something was going to happen between us one day where I'd stab him or something. I didn't say nothing. <laughs>